meteorites, rocks from space. Uh, I have to confess, this is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, and I brought some of my uh, close friends here, my meteorite friends. And uh, I'd like to start out with the most primitive meteorites. Uh, these are called stony meteorites or chondrites. The one I'm holding here uh, is from the desert in Morocco. One thing to notice, it has a crust on the outside, a glassy crust. That's called the fusion crust. This, this forms as the meteorite enters the atmosphere. And you, you can imagine uh, the speed uh, generates quite uh, a high temperature uh, wind ablation over this surface. So there's a glassy uh, outer layer and then little depressions, uh, almost like little thumbprints. Those are called regmaglyphs. So this glassy outer uh, layer, fusion crust, and the little depressions are uh, from its tra uh, traversing the, the atmosphere. Oh, if I flip it over, uh, the interior, uh, you may be able to see these tiny little spherules. Those are called chondrules, those little round features. Depending on how much metamorphism the meteorite had in its history, uh, you might not be able to see them as distinctly as this. But uh, these tiny little particles are the oldest solid matter in the solar system. They condensed out of the solar nebula about 4.568 billion years ago. So uh, when you find a stony meteorite, it's really a treasure. So uh, these tiny little features called chondrules have the same mineralogy as the crust and mantle of the Earth. Now also within this matrix, we uh, also have iron. And uh, I'll demonstrate that by putting this magnet on. The iron is dispersed in the matrix as well. Uh, so these primitive meteorites condensed out of the solar nebula. And these are the most primitive type. Now, when meteorites like this collide together, let's see, uh, maybe I can show you some of the metal here. Uh, let's try to angle that in the light. Are, you getting, are we getting that at all? See metal flakes in there? Okay, very good, very good. So uh, when these meteorites or material like this out in space uh, was swept together at various orbits, uh, particularly in the inner solar system, uh, they made bigger and bigger objects. Uh, through these through the impact and coalescence. So uh, depending on how hot they were and how big they were, they had a certain amount of radioactive material in them. Uh, they may have melted when they reached a particular size. And when they melted, the iron would sink into the middle uh, and then the uh, silicate minerals would form in layers around that very much like the structure of the Earth. So when these types of small asteroids uh, uh, would collide with one another, sometimes their iron cores were released as fragments that would then come down through the atmosphere. So these are the primitive or stony meteorites. These are the asteroid core fragments. So um, uh, let me show you this one. This was part of about 70 tons of iron that rained down uh, over a, a region called Sokotialene in eastern Russia back in the 1940s. Uh, but uh, you'll see the, very clearly the pits on the surface from wind ablation. Uh, and um, when we look into the interior of these meteorites, if we section them and etch them with acid, let me take this one out. There we go. That one's got four pins. Okay, let's take this one out here. 
So uh, when these are etched with acid, you can see the iron nickel crystals that make up uh, the mass of these meteorites. These are asteroid core fragments. And uh, in order to get crystals this size, you had to have extremely slow cooling rates, perhaps two to three degrees Celsius per million years. So um, these are fantastic meteor uh, uh, samples, uh, fantastic meteorites to find. Slice and etch, and you can see the internal crystal structure. This is probably how Earth got its iron core. Uh, being swept together uh, in this fashion as well. Now, um, sometimes we get examples of uh, the transition between the core and the mantle of the asteroid. So there's a mix of iron and crystals, uh, silicate crystals. So the mineral in this case is olivine, uh, and you can see the metal matrix uh, and olivine here. So much of the Earth's mantle is made of olivine, and uh, there was a significant amount of olivine uh, in the mantle of these uh, differentiated meteorites. I'm gonna put a light behind it now, uh, and so you can see uh, the, the olivine a little more dramatically here. Okay, very good. So, uh, meteorites give us a, a record of the early history of the solar system, and this is a particularly significant type of meteorite. This is a chondrite, uh, or stony meteorite also, with the exception uh, that it doesn't have any metal, and uh, this is uh, encasing the oldest known solid matter in the solar system. So, these irregular white patches that you can see here and here uh, throughout the air, uh, the matrix. Uh, those are called calcium aluminum inclusions. And as, a, as I was mentioning, uh, those are the oldest dated uh, substances uh, in the solar system. So 4.568 billion years old, uh, those irregular patches. These also contain a significant amount of water uh, and it's very much like, uh, isotopically, it's identical to Earth's water. Uh, and uh, a whole host of organic compounds, including amino acids and nitrogen bases. So the building blocks of life are common out in space. So these are, uh, uh, in my opinion, well, some of the most interesting types of meteorites. Now, uh, we do know that occasionally, um, uh, asteroids of some size have struck the Earth. And one of the uh, major impacts uh, was in Mexico, uh, the Chicxulub impact. I think most people have heard of this, uh, but um, oil companies had discovered this massive ring crater uh, right on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Uh, and uh, this is the impact site uh, 66 million years ago. Uh, an asteroid struck here, and there is a lot of gypsum in the bedrock here. And so that was an unfortunate place for the asteroid to strike if you were a dinosaur. Uh, the uh, material that was blasted out of this, uh, this area went up into the stratosphere. Uh, and a lot of the gypsum uh, created sulfuric acid compounds that froze and were very reflective. So it knocked out photosynthesis uh, and changed the world. There were shockwaves of extinction through the terrestrial and, ocean and oceanic communities, especially affecting uh, the big animals. So, um, Rocks from space, we, we uh, have quite a number of interesting specimens in our collection here. Uh, again, uh, the one that's featured prominently there uh, on the camera, uh, that is one of the palisites. 
So that would be the uh, transition between the, astero the asteroid's core and mantle uh, with all the beautiful uh, olive That is a new acquisition uh, in the middle there. Uh, again, one of these palisites. Uh, pretty fantastic stuff. So, um, meteorites uh, are a relic uh, of the, from the early, earliest history of the solar system, and they provide us lots of information uh, about how the Earth formed and uh, other objects in the solar system.